Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships from True Story FM. Are you ready to nest? Because today we're talking all about the power of interior design and the new post-divorce you. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Seth Nelson. I'm here with my good friend, Pete Wright. And our guest today is Jamie Blumenthal of Blumenthal Designs, an interior designer. She's a mother of daughters, a dog mom of Cody the Black Lab, who you must check out on TikTok because he went viral. The dog is on TikTok, Jamie. Yes, my my daughter did a video um, how I taught my dog to smile and um, she put it out on TikTok <laughs> and he got over a million views. So he's super famous. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I, this is just six degrees now, six degrees of Cody, the smiling right. dog. It's amazing. <laughs> what what Seth doesn't know, Jamie, is that you and I have been uh, have been secretly planning this podcast conversation in order to just give you an opportunity to look at Seth on Zoom and just start tearing apart his office. Just what is give us all the things he needs to he needs Wait, to do better. Right. I did that office. You I did? did office. That's yes. amazing. <laughs> then it'll be a that very short list. <laughs> I helped with the layout of the place. So I, um, yes, and I do actually, I love the um, the poster that he has the, on the back wall. So yes, keep totally. calm and carry keep on. Keep calm and carry on. Yes. I, I, I wish I have it. I usually have a response. I got, I have a mask that, that is red like that. It just says, there is no calm on it. It's a, it's a COVID <laughs> mask. So I, I like to wear that while we podcast together. Uh, we are, we're talking about uh, interior design and uh, the power of creating the new post-divorce you. Uh, and, and I feel like, could we start just talking a little bit about what it means to have to rediscover your identity when you move into a, a different place? Like, what is what are, what are you going through when you what are the kinds of questions that people ask you as you as you embark on this new journey alone? So I, you know, speaking from someone that um, is recently divorced, I will just let you know and put that out there to begin with that I'm speaking from shoes of yeah. experience. Very personal. Um, yeah. And I do have a lot of clients who are divorced as well. And I will say it's, you know, at first it is overwhelming because there were a lot of things you purchased together um, that made your home. And then when you start to um, split the toaster, you know, split the sheets, all of those things, um, it becomes a little mishmashy. So what what I try to do is meet with the client and evaluate the pieces that they're keeping um, or that they're going to take with them or that they've already taken. And we evaluate what pieces are important to them and what pieces are temporary. And then I talk to them about what their styles are. Sometimes I'll have them go on Pinterest and pull some ideas of looks that they like so we can kind of hone in on what their personal style is. Because, you know, you've been married 15, 20 years. Your style has either taken on your exes or maybe you never really got a vote as to what the direction was going. And now you have half this furniture that may or may not be your style. So that's the first step in kind of recognizing what the ultimate goal is for each client. And Pete, I will tell you that when I um, went through this process, I worked with Jamie on this exact thing. And mm -hmm. she said, go on Pinterest. Let me just see. And I had never been on Pinterest before. Yeah, what are you, so I go what are you in doing and on Pinterest? Nothing. I, yeah, you, I have no idea. So, but I'm clicking away and I'm all excited. I'm clicking all this stuff. And I call Jamie and I'm like, did you check out my Pinterest? She's like, yeah. I'm like, what do you think of my style? And of course, I'm just looking for props here, <laughs> right? And she just calmly says, expensive. <laughs> oh, 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 no, there was a whole list of things that she could have said in my head and expensive was like last on the list. Yes, he does have expensive <laughs> taste. I will I will say yeah. that clean, modern that checks lines. Out. Yeah. But we'll talk about this later in the show. Jamie made that happen for me without breaking the bank. Yeah. So there's ways to do it because I'm sure people are thinking, first off, what is interior design have to do with divorce. But like Jamie's saying, it's about you're separating your belongings, but what's going to make you feel good and at peace as much as you can when you're getting into your own space? I can, that that gets back to what Jamie was saying. That's, I, I feel like 
uh, if, if I'm trying to put myself in those shoes and, it, it, you know, Seth, I'm, I'm really curious, like in all seriousness, there is a state of just like confusion and uh, like, like I'm just out of alignment with the world when you ask me things like, what, what do you like? Like, I don't know what I like. I forgot. I forgot what I like. I don't really have strong opinions about things, but it turns out I, I'll bet I do. If, if you just get, if I figure out how to, how to get the right questions asked toward me. And that's exactly what the first consultation meeting is about is kind of saying, well, does it, what do you like about this picture? What speaks to you from this of the pieces that you decided that you wanted from the divorce? Why did you pick this piece? You know, is it something that means something to you? And what does it mean? Uh, there are a lot of people that might have um, antiques that they took with them that were from their grandparents or aunts and uncles. And how are we going to incorporate that into what might not be the style of the antiques and how do we work that in? So it's a lot of, I ask a lot of questions and it's a lot of listening and trying to understand what's important and also how to use the space. Prior to COVID, it wasn't as much of a thing, but you know, since COVID, there's a lot of conversation of, do you need your kitchen table to also be your home office? Like you need a room for your children. Are they part-time? Where are you going to work from? What happens if they get quarantined? Where are they working from? How are you making this smaller? Because generally it's a smaller space. How are we going to make this smaller space work for you so that you still get the quality time with your children? So it's it's because it's so different from going from a 4,000 square foot house to an 1,800 square foot condo or a townhouse. It's it's a big chain. Well, I, I was going to ask about children and you took us in the COVID uh, direction. I imagine some complexity in all of these choices because now like you're having to adapt to not just you figuring out like, what do I like? Uh, like, can, can we put my velvet Elvis up somewhere to like, what, do, how do I, how do I figure out? How the answer is yes. The <laughs> answer is yes. Velvet Elvis. There's always right. a wall. There's always, always a wall. Right. Right. Uh, and if not, there's a ceiling. Right. <laughs> like, uh, Which is totally okay too. Uh, is, is how do you, how do you integrate your kids into this process? Right. If you're, if you're separating families, families. And that gets even more complicated, I have to imagine, when they're not spending 100% of their time with you, most likely, right? Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, you know, from experience, so um, when we separated, one of the things that was most important um, to my ex-husband was to make sure that that our daughters felt at home. Our daughters needed to feel at home. Our daughters had to have a space that they felt comfortable, that they would want to be there. And that was important for him. And it was important for me to make sure that the girls had that because when we agree on 50-50, it needs to feel like 50-50. All the clothes couldn't be at my house. Half of the cl clothes needed to go over there. You know, I, I even bought doubles of toiletries and things you don't think of, like all the organizers, ma makeup mirrors for my girls that, you know, if they like to sit and do their makeup, I want to make sure that in their father's place that they, that they have a spot to sit and do their makeup. You know, something as simple as that. And listen to that terminology. And this is the thing that gets lost. When we talk about kids and going back and forth, it is in our nomenclature, mom's house, dad's house. Never is it the kid's house. Oh, so just right. think about that, right? From a kid's perspective, oh, I'm at mom's or I'm at dad's. But what we're saying and what Jamie's saying is that needs to feel like their home, right? Right. So I'll say, I'll say to my son, oh, are you, are you coming home? And he'll say, yeah. And then I'll say, which one? Right. Because it might be mom's home class his help right so but it we all say it mom's house dad's house so just think about that a little bit but in making it their own mm -hmm. like you're saying it really helps go ahead right. well we don't want them to live out of a suitcase right we don't and, and they do they they schlep, schlep a suitcase back and forth from place to place they, there's there's no way around that because they have their basics but the more stuff that you can duplicate at both spaces the less you know schlepping back and forth and they're feeling more and more at home wherever they are, whether it's moms or dads, they both feel like home. So I think it's, it's you know, that's one of the things that I would say is one of the most important things, as well as when you were asking about how to figure out your space, um, I think it's very important to finish your space, to not feel temporary. So I think when you first get into your new space, it feels so temporary that 
it's very important for your psyche and for your mental state to set this place up because you're going to be there, whether it's two, three or four years, you know, there's been such an upheaval in your life that you need some sense of normalcy and some place that you feel somewhat good about because you kind of feel like everything's been shifted so drastically that nothing feels like home. That's very true, Jamie. Some people will, when they split up, if they're not getting the house, they'll move into a rental and they'll say, well, I just have to, divorce is still going on. I'm not going to keep the house. I'll move out. And so now they're in a rental. Well, how long are they going to be in the rental? Is it a year? Is it going to be two years? But you still are saying, make that feel complete. Because if you're living on a beanbag chair and you've got the futon because you're you're not really sure how all the money is going to shake out. And this is what we're talking about in the kind of second section of the show is how to do this on a budget so it can feel complete. But that will help you immensely, even if you know I might only be here a year, two years, whatever the case may be. Right. It's a mental. How do you determine what complete looks like? Well, I imagine that's uh, like, what are the, what are the basics when you're, when you're setting something up? How, how, at what point have you reached a bar that says we're finished? I don't know that there's ever a bar that says we're finished. I, I think because your home is constantly evolving, but I don't want it to look like a college dorm. So if your new place, if your place looks like a college dorm. I sort of aspire to college dorm. I don't know if you did. <laughs> That's for the man me. cave. The man cave is the <laughs> college dorm, not the main living space. Okay. All There's right. a space That's for fair. that. That's right. Fair. So it's important to have a nice sofa or, and then when I say nice, and we'll, again, we'll get into budgets. I mean, not a futon, you know, real pieces of furniture so that while you're starting your next chapter, you feel good about yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Because what you don't want to do is come home and sit in the dark in the half finished place with a little poster on the wall that you, you know, was in the basement, you know, that you got to put up on the wall, like you need things that are to scale to actually fill up the space. That's what I would say when you have things that are to scale, that's when you know your place is somewhat finished. So this is one of these questions that Jamie asked me when I was going through this process with her. Um, and she asked me all these things like, well, what do you like? What about, and I really had no idea, Pete, back to your right. point. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't even know. I just knew that at the time I had a kid that was this old and I wanted to be nice for him and I knew I needed a, a play area and this and that. So I had some segments of what I wanted. Yeah. Um, but then when Jamie came in and I'm like, oh my God, look at this big, massive leather couch that just looks so comfortable and manly, right? And she's like, that's not gonna fit. Yeah, right, <laughs> right? right. So let's just think about it because you don't wanna walk in and have it be like all overwhelming. It's gotta be kind of pleasing to the eye, which I cannot tell when we're setting things up, but Jamie will take something and move it six inches over and it just looks better, right? right. And it takes her... 30 seconds, I would never have done that. But it does make the house feel complete. And also like the kitchen, just having a proper set of dishes right. and silverware and you're not using a spork, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. You got to have a strainer to strain the pasta. Like, uh, right. I mean, you, should, you should have more than one pan. Exactly. And right. to get those things set up so that you can function like an adult, because you really almost feel like how you felt just after college is really how you feel. You, it's, yeah. it, or at least one of you tends to feel that way, if not both, but generally the one who moves out feels that way. But let's look at the reverse side. The one that stays in the house. Half the furniture's gone. Yeah, they're now in a shell. Yes, absolutely. For me, there was shifting stuff around and, you know, reorganizing. Uh, One of the things that, depending on how you can do things, like, because my daughter had some um, Ikea furniture, some white classic Ikea furniture, the mom collection, for anyone who's out there that is an Ikea person, you know, the oh, mom collection. Hardcore mom. Oh, yes. Right. M-A- everyone knows M-A-L-M, the mom. M-A-L-M, <laughs> right? No, <laughs> right? Totally M-A-L-M. Know the mom. Yes. The mom. Yeah, everyone knows no. the mom, right? Please. So you get the classic mom collection. So what I told her father to do, I was like, listen, go get more of the mom collection. So I'll give you one <laughs> nightstand. We'll each buy one more nightstand. So that way she has something to start with. And if we financially can't buy two more nightstands, at least we know she has one of, she has one there, one here. And when you're ready to put, the other piece together, you can. And thank goodness for a place like Ikea, you can, you know, complete a set. So 
Um, there was some of that. There was some reorganizing of spaces, um, purchasing different chairs and things like that to kind of fill in some of the gaps. Um, and, and I do that with clients too. Like if they get the big brown leather sectional, it's, you know, what other pieces do we need to go with that to complete it? I, I would never walk into somebody's home and say, well, that's got to go. You know what yeah, I mean? So it, right. it's a matter of saying like, and and like we said, we'll talk about budget, but it's a matter of... Well, you know, Jamie says that, but when I was living with my girlfriend, who Jamie's very good friends with, she walked in and she looked at me and said, that's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when she says never, right. uh, yeah, there's right. always the exception yeah, to the rule, right. right? What we do is we just well, make all the other things look so good that yeah. you're like, oh, do you really <laughs> yeah. want to keep that now? Like, <laughs> I, I do have a question, though, because a couple of times, you know, we keep talking about feel and, and you know, sort of how things feel. And I think so much of the uh, my sense is that, you know, this question of, of figuring out scaling and figuring out, you know, Seth said moving things six inches, it suddenly feels better. Like, I may not know anything about the look or the pedigree of a particular piece or the room. But I do know when I go sit down in that chair in the corner, if it feels right, like I can intuit this feels better than when it was over over there. Right. And so um, my my sense is that, that so much of your work is, and, and this is really a catch me when I start lying, is uh, so much of your work is about helping your clients feel uh, like they're a part of a space in a way that that isn't the the empty college dorm bit. Absolutely. As far as the type of designer I am, my goal when I leave is that the home is a reflection of my client, that it's not sure. like, oh, a designer came in here and did this. This is beautiful. It's, oh, I actually like to eat dinner in front of the TV. I have this cool coffee table that actually pops up into table height so I can sit there and eat my dinner in front of the tea. That's how I live, but it can still be cool and modern. Um, so it's, it's, that is my ultimate goal is where do you like to sit? In, I mean, I, and this has happened more than one time where I've had a client, the room, the TV is centered on the wall, but the chaise to the sectional is off to the left. And the husband will say, no, that needs to be center. The chaise has to be centered in front of the TV. Cause that's where I like to sit. And, you know, so it's, it's understanding where do you like to sit to watch TV? Where do you like to sit to eat? Where do you work on your computer? Where do you charge your phone? Like Seth knows, like I'm all about charging stations. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's you important. Yeah. Right. The drop zone. Like, where's you're the right. drop zone? The kids are now coming in with their backpacks. Where's their stuff going? Because you're in a smaller space. Is there a bench for all the shoes to go and the backpacks to land? So it, it's a matter of setting up the home, how you live and make it look good for how you live, not make you adapt to this beautiful space. Right. On that point, literally, I've just done some work in my condo, but Jamie has had me move where I keep my toaster. She And I did. know it's how to split a toaster. And we literally, we moved where the toaster was. And let me tell you what happened. You, you now just leave a lot of bread in the bathroom? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we moved the toaster <laughs> to a different section. Now that has become kind of our breakfast area. And my son and I eat breakfast more at our dining room table now because that's kind of where it's set up. I live in a condo. It's kind of an open yeah, yeah. area and less at the bar in the kitchen. Oh, so where we yeah. eat has now changed all because Jamie said, y your toaster needs to live over here. And now you have more space. Like yeah. now it's a whole nother space. The kitchen's less crowded. And it, it functions. So it's a matter of putting, that's where the, now the bread sits over by the toaster and, you know, there's a little refrigerator and there's, that's where the butter and the cream cheese sit. So you don't have to, you know, do this whole back and forth and, and really use the space properly. So there, that's why all the conversations are so important. So I, I'm kind of listening to this and I know I've been through it, but Pete, I don't know if you're struggling with this question. Like, like, how do you do this? Like, I hear what Jamie's saying, but if you were like me, yeah, coming to be a single guy, and I'm like, really, this is not high on my priority list, even if I have a kid. Does this really make an impact? It, 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 are you feeling any of that, Pete? Yeah, I am. And I, I think so much of that comes in because my, my initial stress is something you both have alluded to, uh, which is all around budget. And every time he says, now we're going to talk about budget. And I think it's time we talk about the actual mechanics of doing the work 
Uh, but first, Seth, shall we define a term? Let's do it. Defining a term today from our favorite Black Law Dictionary, equitable distribution. The division of marital property by a court in a divorce proceeding under statutory guidelines that provide for a fair, but not necessarily equal, allocation of the property between the spouses. What does that mean? In English, who gets what and how does the court decide? Keep it simple. Okay, so we said we're going to talk about the mechanics of this whole thing, but I have to tell you, Seth, you just defined a term, and there is a brief phrase that carries a lot of weight, and that is fair but not necessarily equal allocation between parties. Uh, what's going What's going on there? So equitable is fair, but doesn't mean that it's equal. And going back to you know another podcast that we had discussing about splitting the orange when two kids are fighting mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's fair because one kid wants the juice, but the other one wanted the the peel. Well, maybe it's not equal. The peel's bigger. Right. The juice was less. If we're measuring your stuff by gross weight. <laughs> exactly. So that is just a small example of it might not be equal, but it was fair. Be and they both thought it was fair because they got what they wanted out of their interest. One got the peel to make the cake. The other got the juice to drink. Okay. And that concept can go through family law. It does get very complicated. And when you're talking equity, maybe the law's not on your side. Like we've talked before, this is where I always say, talk with your lawyer in your local jurisdiction about how that works. I don't deal in fairness that much mm -hmm. because even if you're going to court and it comes out fair at the end, it wasn't necessarily fair because you had to go through that horrible litigation process that we've talked about, like with Dr. Gaze before mm -hmm. on collaborative law. So sure, there is... A major issue, though, if you're moving out and you just don't have the money to buy this stuff. Yeah, right. That's a huge stress. That's been in the back of my head this whole conversation. How do you afford it? Where does the money come from? First off, you have the stuff in the house, so you can divide that. But then sure. we're trying to fill in, like Jamie's saying, you got the big leather couch. What will go nice with that, right? So one is, do you have any savings or where can that money come from? And Jamie knows much more about buying furniture than I do. So I'm going to let her talk about ways that you can buy furniture that are relatively inexpensive. Yes, absolutely. So um, I, I said earlier, Ikea is one of those great places to go where, yes, you have to put the stuff together, but they're simple. They're white, they're black, and it's modular furniture. So especially if you end up in a townhouse or a condo that is smaller, you can gain a lot of storage. Um, with stuff from Ikea and not spend a lot of money. I have also taken many clients will go to rooms to go or another place like Ashley Furniture or someplace. There are a lot of places that have free financing, um, terms like that, or pe Macy's has furniture. A lot of people have Macy's credit cards and they'll have good sales. And I'll always tell my clients, sometimes just put it in your cart and wait for the sale to come around and... Oh, like when you're shopping online, you mean? Oh, sure, 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 yeah. Yes, when you're if you're shopping online, you'll, they'll come back and nice. be like, hey, we'll give you an extra 20% off. Come back and shop with us. Um, but I would definitely say the rooms to go and the free financing for two years that you can get your daughter or son's room set up with a, you know, a bed, two nightstands, the mattress, a dresser to hold all their, their clothing and stuff, and you can pay it over a few years. Now, and what I will say about that furniture as well is don't forget these kids are growing up and going off to college. We are not looking to furnish their room as like the end all be all room. It needs to feel like home. It needs to be nice enough. And and the stuff from Rooms to Go, a lot of it is like technologically savvy. Like they'll have the USB plugs and stuff. Like you'll be able to plug in your nightstand and then there'll be like a USB port in the top of the nightstand. So there are some great options out there that don't have to, you don't have to break the bank and you don't have to do designer furniture for the kids' rooms. You can even purchase used furniture and, and, and paint it or have it painted. I've had friends whose kids are going off to college that they want to turn those rooms into a study. So again, through the internet, there are different um, 
like swap shops or, or online places where you can purchase furniture that's gently used that will get them through because some of these kids, they may only be home for another three years. So why do you need to buy a brand new high-end bedroom set when they're going to be there for three years and you might transition that room anyway? And I will let you know, there is an app called Thumbtack that you can go on and say you have a project that you need done and people will quote it. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, anything from you need your house painted, Mm -hmm. there are painters on there. I had it for my son's bar mitzvah. I found someone that did stitching in in these little blankets that we got. She stitched in the date of his bar mitzvah. And I found this woman on uh, thumbtack. Right. And like handyman too, like a lot of women now, the the ex-husband's out of the house. So they need someone to help with some, you make your list and you go on thumbtack and you find a handyman. And then when they come over, you give them the list of all the things you need done that maybe you, you know, your ex-husband took care of in the house or just, you know, so you're not like, well, I'm alone. I have to do this myself. No, there, there are so many resources out there that are not expensive. Correct. They're not expensive. But they're game changers for how you live, right? Like it's because it's all about how you're going to live in your space. So um, I think it's really important to take the initiative. So Jamie, if you're a guy like me who is going to be a single guy who doesn't know anything about design and you're listening to this podcast, like I don't even know where to find a designer. How much do they cost? How does it work? I thought that's what really fancy people did because I see these shows that these designer comes in, they make it, but it all seems very just foreign to me. I don't think those people are paying for anything. Right. I, that's I, a, I so, agree with you. So this is like, this is all magical. And I'm sure that's the answer is don't worry. It's, it's all magical. It's all magical. And yeah. it's, it'll be done in two days. So don't worry. Right. You leave, <laughs> right. Pause and go to lunch and come back and yeah. it'll be done. So. And also, would you have a would you have a truck in front so yes. that I can stand and then you move the truck? Oh, the I want a reveal. I'm going to need a reveal yes. if we're doing this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so the worst thing for me is those shows, because as we all know, <laughs> it does not take two days to redo a house and transform it. It used to take it could take six to eight weeks, but it could take six to eight months to really set up a space. So when I started doing this, just to give you a little quick background of of how I'm structured and and the industry the interior design industry has evolved it's evolved like every other industry because of the internet and the accessibility to products so when Wayfair came around designers you know we couldn't only do custom furniture we have to adapt because in three clicks it will be here on Thursday right depending on what you purchase so a lot of designers and and me included, the way I structure my business is I start with an hourly rate. So I start with, generally, I'll start with a five hour minimum. The going rate is basically $100 an hour to $200 an hour, somewhere in that range for that price. So for five, let's call it $500, $600, I would come over, we would talk about the things that you want to accomplish. And within those next five hours, I can help select furniture that you could purchase on your own. I could go shopping with you to rooms to go and help you pick the things out. I can put together room concepts on um, basically like a PDF or like a picture concept of the things we want to do with and attach links to them for West Elm or Crate and Barrel or any of the local stores. And then you would just click on that link, put it in your shopping cart. Wait to, for a little few days, try and get a 20% right. discount that's right. and then right. purchase it. Leave it in the right. cart for right. a couple. That's yeah. right. That's right. We so, can be taught. Yes, absolutely. So in, in a nutshell, that is the process that I like to work with for my clients. What's really interesting, I have gotten referrals from like, I've had people say, oh, I was in this lighting store and I got so overwhelmed. And the salesperson at the lighting store told me to call you. So if you don't know where to find an interior designer, it's actually really good to go to either like a local lighting store or um, like Ferguson's, like the plumbing store. They have a lot of relationships with different designers. And I've had like the salespeople call me and say, hi, hey, listen, a client came in, they were really overwhelmed. And you know what, just from talking to them, I think you would be a really good fit for them. And that has worked out very well for me um, when they've taken the time to get to understand the the customer and they'll say, oh, you're a good fit. Or they have probably anywhere from two to five designers that they generally work with in their in their lighting showroom or their plumbing showroom or the tile shop. I've gotten recommendations, you know, things like that. Now, there's also services at 
like restoration hardware has design services as well. So there are other routes to go. If you don't feel comfortable bringing a designer in, you can go to some of these retail shops and they have an in-house designer, which is, I used to work for Norwalk Furniture. Here's the funny thing about all this. Here's, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this. Remember, we're talking about divorce, right? So I'm thinking I'm here, a guy setting up my own place. I'm basically gonna hire Jamie who happens to be a woman in this scenario, to come in and just tell me how to do it. Now, I'm sure in my marriage, I'm like, quit telling me what to do. (laughs) (laughs) Stop telling me what to do. I want the big flat screen TV. And now I'm on my own. And all I'm looking for is Jamie to come in and tell me what to do. do. I'm a marriage counselor. In my profession, I'm actually a marriage counselor. I do interior design, but I'm constantly the the middleman, the referee in in marriages. As well as right, Jamie's like telling the woman, I'm guessing this is a guess. Do you basically, and I know this is kind of the sexist comment, I apologize, but you tell the guy, let her pick out the pillows, and you tell her, Look, we're spending all this on this great, gorgeous kitchen that you want. Let him get the big flat screen TV. Yeah, yeah. that is, yes, yes. See, let him get the big flat screen. <laughs> yes, that is always, it's and, all about splitting the orange. It, yeah, exactly. Right. It's compromises, yeah. right? And then if I want right. seven pillows on the bed, he's like, Fine, as long as I've got the big big screen TV, we're good. So let me, let me circle back to the conversation, Pete, that we had alone, because Jamie has all these great ideas about going to Pinterest and pinning all this stuff. Yes. And of course we talked about, Hey, don't post on social media. And this is why people hate lawyers, because now I'm going to tell you, look, if you're working with someone and you want to go to Pinterest and post all of this stuff, that's fine. That's not going to come back and haunt you in court. Because if I'm a lawyer and I get that and I'm like, well, you were on Pinterest, weren't you? Yes. And you posted all these expensive things. Yes. Well, what were you doing? I was trying to figure out how to set up the room for the children to make them most comfortable. Mm -hmm. And did you do that? Yes. Well, what did you do? You hired a designer? Yes. Oh, did you think that was excessive? Well, no. Why? Because I paid her $100 an hour for five hours and she looked at what I posted and she got those same things at Ikea, which was a lot less. Right. And I spent a total of $750. And now my kids really feel comfortable in their room. At no point does that sound like you're showboating. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. But that really is when you go through this process and you can pick out all this stuff that you like, but for five or 10 hours of time, to make that new house comfortable for your children yeah, and for you, right. right? It's not just about the kids. You're in your own space, maybe for the first time in a long time, and you just might be lost. Like you're saying, Pete, I wouldn't even know what to pick. Yeah. But when you kind of say, these are the things that kind of strike my eye, and then you have someone at a fit, a, a fixed rate or amount of time and says, I can do all this, and then you order it, right? And then if you need help setting it up, Ikea has people that will set it up for you and put it together. There's that Thumbtack app. I'm sure there's a handyman around because you might just not have the time. Right, right. right. Well, and, and that, you know, the bottom line is, I, I think considering the state, the post-divorce state, having somebody like Jamie, having somebody that you can count on to carry the weight of decision making of taste making of just helping you figure out who you are that, that is an enormous i think stress reliever right to just be able to outsource that part of your brain that is going to be in a state of anxiety trying to figure all those pieces out i i i knowing myself i know that's where i would be not only is it outsourcing so you have one less thing to deal with when you're going through this extremely difficult time at some levels some people might think that's fun they're meeting with somebody new they're helping them and they're getting to pick out new stuff for themselves while still orchestrating to mix it in with what they have. I think it's the also feeling confident um, because don't forget, you also are going to be going back out into the dating world. And when, you know, you get to the point where you would invite someone over to your place, you don't want it to look like a college dorm and you want to feel confident and proud. Well, that depends like how old the woman you might be dating. (laughs) Oh, Seth. 
Right. So bad. So bad. <laughs> right. Right. Of I'm course. just stirring the pot for right. future clients on that of one. Course. So you can edit that out. <laughs> of course. Well, listen, I have a side note that I want to make sure I, I, I don't know if it'll, if it'll make sense to everybody, but I want to make sure I make this point. When a man or a woman is decorating their new home, um, this kind of goes back to that feng shui zen kind of world that we've all heard about. I make sure, I try to make sure that a man doesn't make his home too masculine. And I try to make sure that a woman doesn't make her home too feminine. Because when you get back into the dating world, um, if you have an entire pink and white house, a man may not feel very comfortable in your new space, in, in your space and feel like they don't belong. So there needs mm-hmm. to be this element of balance between feminine and masculine, because a lot of the men, they'll be like, okay, I want the big TV. I want the big leather couch. I want all dark furniture. I want this. I want, and then I'm like, well, Pete said that he wanted a jacuzzi <laughs> with all these speakers that were going to be sick. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be crazy. But also post-divorce, I'm sure that I'm also going to have a waiting pool full of piranha in, in my sp- former spouse's <laughs> name. Like I just like I my I, as we get close to wrapping up, I all I can think about is like, have you ever hit like what were the craziest like requests that you've gotten? Have you ever gotten any crazy requests? That's a great from, oh, my gosh. From post-divorce? Wow, that is a great question. Um, Not really crazy. Or I've said, well, let's just think about that for now. That's how I handle my, <laughs> let's just table that. Let's just table that. Or, or You've now said it out loud. We're going to let that ring in the air <laughs> and we're going to come back to it. We're going to put a pin in it. Right. Well, or I would say no woman ever is going to come over here if you have that in your life. Right, right. <laughs> you, will, you will never date again, my friend. You will never date again. <laughs> Right. So, but do you have clients that basically go to that extreme where I could never have what I wanted at my, I'm going to set this up a hundred percent for me. I, cause I would see that happening. Like, Jamie, I don't care if a woman comes over and doesn't like my place because it's my place. Yes. Right? Least, and that does, that does happen. Um, but what I do, I try to take the edge off of it a little. Like, listen, I'm not expecting a guy to have floral pillows. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, oh, got to return right, those. Right. Dang it. But I <laughs> do feel like I, I'm trying to think if I've had anybody that is really just, you know, gone a hundred percent that way. I would say I've yeah. had a couple of people just go a hundred percent restoration hardware. I'm like, I mean, it, it looks great. It looks like the showroom. It looks great. Yeah. Um, right. So you got to, you know, put some personal touches on it. It is a little awkward when people come walking yeah. through your house right. trying to buy stuff. Though. <laughs> Jamie, you need to know, I light things on fire a lot. Right. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I'm a primaniac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're going to design <laughs> around Around my living room welding set. Yes, absolutely not my wheelhouse of clients. Okay. So thank goodness. Hey, this has been great, Jamie. You're wonderful. Uh, you. Where where would you like people to uh, to go learn more about you? Oh, um, I have a website, Bloomenthaldesigns dot net. I believe it's not org. It's confirmed. It is dot org. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, that's um. You know what? The good news is I'm, I've been busy with clients, so um, I have an Instagram account which you can find me under Blumenthal Designs in my Instagram. That's probably the best great. because Instagram keeps rolling with pictures, you know, more yeah. frequently than the website. You can go there and check out ideas. You don't just have to go to Pinterest. You can yeah, check out ideas right. that Jamie's done on other houses and stuff. It's really cool. All right. Make sure we're a good fit. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, it's a it's a delight. Thank you so much for your time today. We sure appreciate it. And uh, Seth Nelson, I, I can't wait to see. You're, you're doing some renovations now on your very own place. Are you going to be Pinteresting? Um, I don't really know how to do that very well, <laughs> but I'm sure it will be on Jamie's so, Instagram will post since it. she's been the, the brainchild behind it. But... In, in in all seriousness, it has changed the way I live in my own space that I've been in for three yeah. years now. That's great. So it's been very, um, what I would say, healthy and calming and uh, more functional, and it just feels good. So thank you, Jamie, for coming on the show. We really appreciate you giving some uh, tidbits and advice on helping people set up their new place Absolutely. Um, when they're going through these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you everybody for downloading and listening to this show on behalf of Jamie Blumenthal and Seth Nelson. I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships.
Seth Nelson is an attorney with Nelson Coster Family Law and Mediation with offices in Tampa, Florida. While we may be discussing family law topics, how to split a toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of Nelson Coster. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida. Mm-hmm.